So what exactly do the Fatui Harbingers want with every Gnosis from each nation? What do they need them for exactly? We know that Piero hinted at seizing authority from the gods, and we know that they don't get along with Celestia. Piero was there when Conrad was destroyed, and we know from the last video the Heavenly Principles got her hands dirty and made that happen. But she could have possibly been injured or who knows what. But what do the Fatui want? Well, I think it's pretty clear they want to liberate Tevat. Because if they didn't, and they just wanted to rule and conquer and destruction, they would just be running amok, killing everyone, and possibly even the Archons, to get it done. But they're not. And in most cases, the Fatui are actually helpful. I mean, there are some bad eggs, but for the most part, they seem to actually care about the Archons, the people, and want to actually help and resolve it, and accomplish their goals with the least amount of collateral damage possible. People that do this aren't out to try to kill everybody. But the Gnosis, what do these Gnosis pieces actually do? Well, in short, I think that they can summon the external help of outside beings and breach Tevat. To understand this, let's put this in simple terms, and I've been saying this for years. Let's think of Tevat like a giant compound or prison. Celestia owns the prison, the prison would be all of Tebad, and everyone that resides in there is inmates. The Archons are like the Jail Wardens. The Gnosis pieces are like keys, because we know that Wardens have keys. Ermansol is like the database that can record everything, and keeps track of everything, and corrections can be made through memory alteration or whatever needs to be done if someone gets out of line or disobeys or causes a problem in the system. Now, do the inmates know they're inmates? No. That is part of forbidden knowledge. Knowledge that is forbidden. And what happens when you dabble in forbidden knowledge? You go mad. Corruption. Withering. We've seen this over and over. You're not allowed to learn these secrets. And these secrets only exist in places outside of this jurisdiction, like Enconomia, or the Abyss, and other external places that have kind of breached outside of the walls of this prison. Most people look at the Archons like their saviors, they're like deity, they worship them, they respect them, but in reality, they're keeping them in check. That's why they all have demon names, and even the Archons themselves be, feel very reluctant of what they're doing. Ventitris tries to not do anything, the Raiden Shogun straight up oppressed her people, Zhang Li killed himself, faked his own death, because he just doesn't want to be the Archon anymore. We're seeing this over and over again. And you notice the Fatui keep bringing up this false sky, this fake world? I have bigger fish to fry. I've discovered something far more important, and far more terrifying. The stars, the sky. It's all a gigantic hoax. A lie. The stars are a lie? <laughs> what are you talking about? Is this some kind of astrological debate between you and Mona? Because if so, surely you can come up with a better argument than the stars are a lie. What was the Jester thinking? He must have had some inkling of what we might discover on this mission. Would it really have been so difficult to give me a little forewarning? Let me ask you, have you in all your mighty knowledge ever heard the rumor that the skies of Tevat are fake? Huh? That's the secret hidden by Ermin's soul concerning the truth of this world. You know, Dodori shares this with Nahida as like, here's a little bit of insight for you because the Fatui know. They know this is all bullshit. This is all a game. It's bullshit. It's a big simulation. And this is all just a prison. They're trying to break it. They're trying to break everyone free. They're trying to break everyone out. It's kind of like the Fortress of Meripede, but on a grander scale. You know, you got the ruler, you got the inmates, and they have this little society where coupons are like currency. And visions kind of represent working your way up in the ladder. Like Risley, who was just an inmate that became the Duke. Well, you can actually become a prison guard by being a good inmate and deemed worthy. But even the Archons, or the Jail Wardens, don't seem to really like this system. And it seems that everybody's getting really self-aware of what's going on. Because living under the primordial one millennia ago was a much better life. Everyone thrived, and it was a much better world altogether. 
until the sustainer conquered Tevatas the second who came and started the new world order. Anybody alive then was eradicated, and the few survivors that slipped through the cracks warn anyone from present day that learning the truth of the old original world is forbidden. It's a bad idea. And people like King Deshert that decided to do it anyway paid the ultimate price. The Archon War was more or less, you know, a really competitive job interview if you really think about it. And as the Archons get older, they seem to really realize this is wrong. Because a lot of the Archons were never around for the Primordial One and when life was good, but the Dragon Sovereigns were. But it seems that they're learning, and that is why Nervalet was actually reinstated as the Lord and Protector of Fontaine. That's his birthright from long before any Descenders ever showed up in Tevat. That is who is supposed to rule is the Dragon Sovereigns, they're the original natives of Tevat, remember this. And the Tsaritsa was the god of love, and it made her sick to her stomach seeing what happened to Conria and this bullshit that's going on. So even though she works for the prison, she's rebelling, and she created a society to help do this. Conria was oh so close to making it happen, but they fell short. But now you take that experience, and the Fatui are perfecting it, and Harvesting the Third Descender's Gnosis pieces, and my theory is that what they're trying to do, specifically, is open a portal, because each Gnosis was carried by one of these Jail Wardens, acting as what I like to see it as, like, keys. And these keys, once they're all put together, can possibly unlock help, or maybe some unknown force from another world or universe or the Abyss, like Skirk, like the Fowl, and who knows what kind of power you can unleash, kind of like what Rhyndaughter, the Alchemist Gold, was experimenting on back 500 years ago, only they can do it right this time. And how exactly they go about summoning this help? Well, not by just literally using the Gnosis as a portal, but maybe reviving the very descender that they come from. That's right, because we know that the Gnosis comes from the third descender, and perhaps reviving this individual is what the Fatui need to do in order to gain their and outside external help. Because I think that if they use these external forces, these forces that are trying to breach this fake world simulation, that they can actually kill the Heavenly Principles. I think it's doable, and I think they need this to do it. External forces, I think, can hurt her and damage her, which is why we haven't seen her for 500 years. Why else would she not be trying to stop People like Nouvellet that just inherited the role of Archon without even being an Archon. She did not authorize this. I think she's really injured. And I think trying to stop the Traveler from leaving Tevat in the opening cutscene was to ultimately prevent them from spreading this information to other worlds, causing her even more headaches. So it was easier just to capture them. But perhaps she did not kill them specifically because she needs them needs them to collect all the elements so that she can harvest their Gnosis as well. Who's to say the fourth Descender can't do the same as the third? And also, it is even possible that Lumine is the third Descender to begin with. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. But Lumine not being a Descender, I think's more just misconception. I think that somehow her database got implemented into Ermensol so that she is now considered from Tevat and is no longer a Descender. I don't believe that to be true, because in the opening cutscene we've seen that she obviously has the same powers as Aether, so it's really hard to say that she's not a Descender, unless she's a copy and the original was killed by the Sustainer. That's always a possibility too. Perhaps she was cloned in order to mislead or misguide him, and maybe her clone got lost in the Abyss, or maybe the clone disobeyed as well. There's a lot of possibilities. Genshin's lore goes above and beyond, but overall what I'm trying to say is, I believe that the Fatui summon external forces to help take down the Heavenly Principles. And the Archons seem to be on board with this because they're not outright refusing, but they're not trying to stop it. And the Saritza herself is enabling it. And the fact that Piero is a royal mage from Conria, he would know exactly how to combat the Sustainer, seeing her firsthand destroy his homeland. At the end of the day, the ultimate goal of Genshin Impact is to eliminate the Sustainer. But what do they do once this actually gets accomplished? Well, I think they just want to reinstate the original god. Genshin Impact, the name, 
of this game translates to original god, so the original god's impact. I believe they want to reinstate the primordial one where life thrived and everyone lived happily. And I believe that will be Paimon when the time comes. What better mascot for the game than the original god for Genshin Impact? But that's going to wrap up this video on what I think the Fatui are quite literally going to do. And we've seen with Skirk and the Fowl and Tartalia and the Fatui being linked to Skirk and outside forces, Rhine Daughter and Conry in general being connected to everyone, that this is the ultimate goal. Is to try to take what they learned from Conria and perfect it to actually defeat the Heavenly Principles and do it right this time. With that said, I do hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I know a lot of this stuff that people have been speculating for years, myself included. You can check out my timeline video. I basically break this down into a much more in-depth version, but it's pretty interesting. With each passing patch and region, it seems to be more true, and that Archons themselves even have to go behind the scenes like Egeria did in order to even make her own people humans. This oppression must be ended. And as for those of you that might say, well, Conria was a threat to the world, and it seemed like they were trying to destroy it. I don't necessarily think so. Conria was trying to use external forces like we talked about to help combat the Sustainer and the Archons that are her jailers, but I think that they got a little carried away. It's like creating a weapon that you don't know how to control exactly, and it ends up destroying yourself in the process. I think that the monsters and everything they unleashed on the world of Tevat was a little more than they could handle. And I think now the Fatui know how to do it right. You know, if you unleash the Narwhal that we just fought in 4.2, you gotta make damn sure you can control it. And I also think the Hex and Circle witches are involved with this as well. So on that note, hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And as always, we will see you all in the next one. Later.